Today I have a Galar painting to show you. I want to talk about how I created a focal point and I've got other interesting stuff to share with you. I've painted a lot of galahs over the years and I enjoy painting them but I found that it's easy for me to get caught up in the detail of all the feathers and paint everything that I see. I've done it so many times and now when I look back at my earlier galah paintings I can see all the flaws. Sometimes I tended to overdo the feather detail. The only one I really like is this one here because I didn't overwork it. With the galah painting that I'll show you today, I wanted to create a focal point where I centred all the detail. The lower half of the galah is much softer and understated and it gives the eye a chance to rest. The focal point on a painting is the area you want to draw the viewer's eye to. In my case it was the head of the galah. The focal point is where you should put most of your detail. It's also the area where you put your darkest colours, your biggest tonal contrast and your sharpest edges. I'm going to show you how I created the focal point on my Galar painting. I'll talk about the colours I used and I'll demonstrate how I created the feather detail by painting negatively. Before we talk about all of that, I have to take a minute or two and thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a platform where you can learn just about anything. They've got thousands of classes on a whole heap of different topics, including photography, graphic design and creative writing. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no annoying ads. And they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. If you're watching this video, then you must be interested in painting and drawing. Skillshare is jam-packed full of painting and drawing classes. I've recommended a lot of them before, but one particular drawing class that I love is this one called Start Drawing, Three Fun Freeing Exercises to Spark Your Creativity. It's by Carly Kuhn. Carly is an artist and designer, and in this class she demonstrates three different drawing exercises you can do to loosen up your creativity. It's a great class that reminds me that we all have this inner creativity that sometimes just needs a little encouragement to come out. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they've included a link. The first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium. So go and explore your creativity and learn something new. And that brings me to the paint and paper that I used. I used a limited palette of only three Winsor & Newton colours on this painting, plus a little bit of lamp black on the pupil. I knew that quinacridone red would be a perfect colour for the pink feathers. So I grabbed that and then I wondered what grey I'd use for the wing feathers. I know that to make a grey you can mix two complementary colours. So I chose cobalt turquoise light as the complementary for quinacridone red. These two together made the beautiful grey that I used on the wings and because I mixed the grey the colour tends to separate on the wet paper and I get all those gorgeous colour variations in the feathers without even trying. The paper I used was Arsh cold pressed watercolour paper. This is thick paper, it's 640 GSM in weight. I stretched mine before I used it, even though you don't need to stretch this thick paper. I work wet on wet a lot and I find that the paper will get waves in it, so I prefer to work on paper that's flat. These gorgeous birds are called galahs. They're a small cockatoo that we have here in Australia. This pair is often in our garden and they feed on the seeds in the grass. The subject of today's painting is on the right, she's the female. I can tell them apart because the females have got pink eyes, 
while the males have got brown eyes. They're fun to watch. They're supposed to be fairly intelligent, so they often get up to mischief. And when they're in a large flock, they're quite noisy, so it's better when there's just two of them. The little lady in today's painting is very affectionate to her mate, and I often see her giving him little neck nuzzles. This is her here, a photo I took about a year ago, and this is the one I used for reference for this painting. On this painting, I said I created a focal point where the work was defined and tight. That was where I put my darkest colours, and that area had the biggest tonal contrast. To help me do that, I opened my reference photo in Photoshop. I got the shape tool and I created an ellipse over the top of the galah. I took the fill out of the ellipse and I increased the pixels on the outer edge so that I could see it. Then I tilted it and moved it over the top of the galah where I wanted the focal point to sit. Made it a bit larger and then when I was happy with it, I saved the image and I sent it to my iPad. I used this image when I was painting so that I knew where to put most of the detail and where I needed to start decreasing the tonal values. On my palette I've got some quinacridone red, some cobalt turquoise light and some permanent magenta. And they're the only three colours I use for this painting apart from a little bit of lamp black that I use on the pupil. Let's have a look at them. This one is quinacridone red. This is cobalt turquoise light. This one here is permanent magenta. These two are complementary colours and when I mix them together I get a beautiful grey and I use that grey on the wings. I started by painting in the pink head feathers with quinacridone red. I wet the paper before I put the paint on because I want a soft edge along here and a soft edge along the feathers under the eye. There's some little white feathers under the eye so I need to reserve the paper there and keep the paint off it. Along here I extended the water onto the white head feathers in order to keep this edge along here soft. You can see how that paint is bleeding into that area now, creating that soft edge. I've dipped my brush into my water pot to try and make it a little bit lighter here at the back. Just taking a bit of pigment off and that will vary the colour so that it's not one flat colour all the way across. You can see this area here is lighter in colour than the rest of the area I've painted. That's because I dipped my brush into my water container. As I work my way down, I need to make my colour lighter in value. I'm still using the same paint from my palette now, but I'm about to dip it into the water to take some of the colour off. Okay, it's just dipped in the water now. And now when I pull it down, there'll be less and less paint on it and it will get lighter as it moves its way down to the bottom of the paper. Even though it doesn't do this on the reference photo, it's still the same colour on the reference photo. I want it to be lighter down here so that I can keep a focal point up near the head. You can see it's quite light down the bottom there. Okay, now I want to mix a grey for the grey for this. So that's the red and I'll mix it with the cobalt turquoise light. This one. They're complementary colours, so if I mix equal amounts of the two colours, I'll get a nice neutral grey colour. That's my plan anyway. Let's have a look at that on the paper. Okay, that's a bit dark like that to begin with. That needs a bit of water mixed into it. I don't want it quite that dark when I put the wash on. So I've got water on my brush. I'll mix that in now. And 
and this is the grey paint that I just mixed. Now you'll notice that it will start to separate slightly. You'll start to see some of the red and you'll start to see some of the cobalt turquoise light. But that's okay. That's what makes it look interesting as far as I'm concerned. I'm never concerned when my paint mixtures start to separate. I read a lot of comments from people who are concerned about that when it happens to them. I don't think they need to be concerned. This is one of the features that makes watercolour so much fun to use and it makes it so beautiful to look at. You can get some amazing results without even trying. The bottom here, I've dipped my brush in the water pot to make the paint a bit lighter. Okay, and you can see how that paint has started to separate. You can see some of the red or pink, and you can see some of the cobalt turquoise. I've painted in the eye and the beak, and also the detail on the cheek. Here I'm painting some permanent magenta onto the shadow area under the beak. I've wet the paper here, and I'm using a fair amount of pigment, so my colour is fairly dark. I drag some of that colour up onto the feather above where the paper is dry and that creates those little feather separations along the edge. Here I've got a bit of the quinacridone red. Here on the wing feathers there's a large shadow that runs along the edge of some of the feathers. I'm going to paint that in first with some of the grey paint. I've mixed a slightly darker grey with the same colours and I'll paint that along the edge on the wet paper. I paint it on the wet paper because I want it to have a soft edge all the way along it. Where the shadow begins along the edge of the feathers, that will be hard. But as the shadow stretches out away from the feathers, the outer edge will be soft. So here, where I'm touching the edge of that large feather on the right, where my brush is now, that edge that touches the feather is hard, because that's where the edge of the water is. But because my water extends down to here, the outer edge of the shadow will be soft. So you can see all the way along here, this edge is soft. So that's giving me a big long shadow running down the wing feathers and it's fairly dark because that area is still in my focal point. When I move out of my focal point or that area that's within the oval that I created, when I move out of there my colours will be much lighter in value. I'll still use the same colours but there won't be as much pigment in the mixture. Now I'm starting to paint in the feather detail in that focal area. So to do that I paint my feathers negatively. So I'm painting the area around each feather. I've just wet these feathers with water. But when I put the paint on my focus is on the edge of the feather on the right hand side of my brush. Not on the feathers that I've just put the water on. The wet paper makes this soft edge here. Now I can come back and clean up the edge with my damp brush. If I don't like the way the paint has spread, I can clean it up with that damp brush. I'll repeat the process here. I'm wetting a couple of feathers with some water. And now I've got some paint on my brush and I'm looking at the edge of the feathers on the right hand side of my paint line. They're the feathers I'm focusing on. And that brings in the edge of those feathers. That's all I'm concerned about at that stage. Now I'll wash the paint out of my brush and I'll use it to tidy up that area if I don't like the way the paint is sitting. I've done a bit more work there. One thing I like to do is paint some clean water over the top of my feathers to soften the edges further. It can look a bit stiff sometimes when I paint like this. So I find that if I paint a wash of water gently over the dry feathers, 
it lifts some of the pigment and it softens everything. I need to make sure it's completely dry before I do it. So I always blast it with my hairdryer first. I want to soften the paint edges, not remove the work I've done. So this is clean water and I'm using my soft brush and rubbing it over the top and that will soften any hard or harsh edges. It's a slow process and it requires a bit of patience. But this is how I gradually build up the detail area. As I work my way down the bird, away from my focal area, my paint will be much lighter in colour and I will make sure my edges are quite a bit softer. So here for example, I'm starting to work my way down the bottom and you can see that my paint mixture is very light. I'll wet underneath the feathers, put the paint on and then if I need to I'll come back and tidy up the paint. Now everything is dry. I've got most of the feathers in. I'm coming back into my focal point now and I'm creating some darker shadows. So I've just wet that area and now I've got an even darker grey. So I'm still using the same grey I mixed up at the start but I've got much more pigment, less water in the paint. You can see that's quite a dark colour. And I want to paint little areas here and there in that focal point where the colour is quite dark. You can see here I've painted a few more. So these are darker shadows. And then I come back and I deepen some of these colours. Still in my focal point or in my focal area. This is where I want my darkest colours, my biggest contrasts. Still using the magenta, but I've got more pigment now. And the pink feathers up the top here, these are in the focal area, so I'm adding a bit more detail up here I'm using rich, bold colours. This is the quinacridone red, but there's a lot of pigment, not as much water. Here I'm adding the little centre lines down each feather. So you can see how it's quite focused and dark in that focal area, but it's fading away down towards the bottom. I decided to increase the colour on the cheek feathers. So here I'm painting a bit of water onto that area. Again, to keep my paint edges soft, I'll use quinacridone red again, but I'll pick it up from here where it's on the palette. So I've got a lot of pigment. It's quite dark. I'll take my damp brush now and feather that out a bit. So there it is. I think I'm happy with it now. So I can take the washi tape off from around the edge. That gives me that nice white border. And then I can cut it from my board. You can see it's quite light down the bottom, which is what I wanted. And there it is. I worked on this little guy over two days. The way I paint the feathers is time consuming and it requires a bit of patience, but it's not that difficult to master. If I was to paint all the feathers in with the same amount of contrast all the way down the bird, the same way it is on the reference photo, it'd be difficult to look at. By creating a focal point and softening everything else that's not in that focal point, I've created an area for the eye to rest. And I think it's much easier to look at that way. I'm going to create a full length version of this tutorial where I don't skip over anything for my Patreon site. I'll also be starting work on a new tutorial for Skillshare very soon. I hope this was helpful to you. Please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. 
and I'll see you soon with a new video. Today I've got a galah to show, to show you. Yeah, this. Today I have a galah painting. 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 Today I've got a galah painting to show you. I want to talk about creating a focal point and I've got lots of other interesting stuff. Yeah, I do have lots of interesting stuff. That's something that's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. The focal point is the area where she, we The first 1000 people who use the link in my description will see will receive a 1 month free trial. So click the link and you'll receive a free trial. Of Skillshare Premium. The first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will see, will see, I did it again. Use the link and you'll see. It's a great class that reminds me that we all have this inner cre creativity. The paper I used was Ash Cold Pressed Watercolor paper. If I was to paint all the feathers on the wing the same way, no that's not what I was going to say. No, start again. It's a little birdie over there. 